This is video number two of my earth bag challenge. The goal of the challenge was to build a 14 foot diameter earth bag dome within three months with total expenses under $2,000, working alone in the desert at a location without road access or water. In the previous video, I outlined the project, gave details about the restrictions, and showed the foundation preparation. In this video, I'll show how much I was able to complete, point out the problems that I encountered, and the mistakes that I made. Hopefully, by sharing my mistakes, I can help someone else avoid those. After the foundation was carved out, I began filling bags. Here, I'm using a five-gallon bucket with the bottom removed, turned upside down to hold the bag while I shovel dirt into it. I found it was easier to work in batches, so in one session I would fill many bags. On the next session, I would carry the bags to the build location, lay them, and pound them into place with a tamper. I had to take dirt to fill the bags from several locations because those locations had a slightly higher clay content and the higher clay content is better for making more stable earth bags. Some of those locations were a bit far from the building site, and I found that I was wasting energy carrying the filled bags over those distances. I attempted to use a wheelbarrow to carry the bags, but it was too hard to get the loaded wheelbarrow over the sandy areas. So, I bought this children's plastic sled from Walmart, it allowed me to carry the filled bags and other heavy items across the sand without wearing myself out. After laying and tamping each layer of bags, I put two rings of barbed wire down. The wire is there to help keep the bags from moving. After the first four layers were done, I added four-inch PVC pipe vents at two locations. I'm planning to use the pipes as air intake channels, they may also be used as conduits for piping or wires later on. You can see them here at the 2 o'clock and 7 o'clock positions. I had to cut holes in the plastic moisture barrier that wraps underneath the earth bags in order to let these vents pass through. I used silicone tape and caulk to seal those cut areas to prevent moisture from leaking in. Also, I positioned the pipes so that they came out about three inches on the inside to allow space for plastering and other possible needs. These can be trimmed later. This photo was taken on calendar day 36. However, since my average days worked per week were five, this is work day 26. For clarity, I'll refer to both calendar days and work days in this video. You can see that at this point I am up to about nine layers with an interior wall height of just under three feet. You can also see that I've begun creating the Corbell dome shape by gradually making each layer slightly smaller than the one below it. Around this time I also began leaving space for the doorway. I made two mistakes here. One, I should have had the door frame in place so that the bags on either side of it could be tampered tightly against it, even at the bottom of the door. Two, I should have begun adding interlocking buttress bags at the doorway earlier at the lower layers. I ended up not starting the doorway buttress until after the doorway had several layers of bags already at the doorway ends. After having the experience of getting this far, I began to have concerns about the stability of the earth bags, mostly because my soil was not very clay rich. So I decided to drive some rebar through these foundational layers to hopefully add more stability. Around this time, I also started to have second thoughts about building this as a dome. There were a few considerations behind this, the main issue being the low percentage of clay in the soil. This low percentage of clay leaves a concern that if any of the higher level bags that would be over my head were to get punctured or break, that the dirt could fall out of those bags too easily and in the worst case cause a collapse of the dome. So I changed the plan here. From this point forward, the walls will be vertically straight instead of corbelled and I'll put on a flat angled roof set on wood rafters instead of the dome cover. While the walls were at this level, I also took the outer layer wrap and tucked it in 
to be held in place by the next highest layer of earth bags. While doing this, I discovered another mistake. I had forgotten to seal the area where that plastic wrap overlapped when I first laid it down under layer one of the bags. So I had to dig down a bit and put some sealant around the outside of that seam to help prevent future water leakage. Here is what everything looked like at the end of calendar day 42, which equaled 30 days of work. At this point, I created a door frame using 2 by 6 pine. As I mentioned before, it was a mistake to wait this long. The door frame should have been put in place much earlier. The frame is held into position using these strap anchors. These were fastened to the bags with nails and fastened to the door frame with screws. Another mistake I made was not tucking the inner plastic wrap when I had the chance, which would have been around layer 5 or 6. That would have been much easier than trying to glue the wrapper to the inner wall, as I'm attempting to do here. In this photo, you can see that I began sculpting the ground around the building so that it was higher next to the building, creating a berm to keep rainwater from accumulating next to the building. Around this time, I started noticing that some of the polypropylene bags were showing signs of degradation. I had read and heard from others that degrading from sun exposure would not be an issue for several months, but mine were showing signs of degrading after only two months. I imagine that might be because of this location in the desert with its very intense sunlight almost every day. So I decided to stop here and put on a thin primer coat of plaster, also known as render. At first I tried putting a mix of cement, lime, and sand directly on the polypropylene bags, but discovered that it did not adhere. After experimenting with a few different primers, I settled on this one, tight bond wood glue, which is non-toxic, and which adhered very well to the bags. Also, the cement, lime, and sand plaster bonded very well to the dried tight bond. After applying the very thin primer layer of tight bond, I then put a second layer, also thin, of cement, lime, and sand. I added a north-facing window frame here, measuring three feet by three feet. As you can see, the view from the window is very nice. This photo shows calendar day 72, representing 52 days of work. The darker bags are the ones that had been covered with the second coat of plaster and the wall is now between five and six feet in height from the interior floor. I have to admit that after 52 work days, over 72 calendar days, I felt physically and mentally exhausted. I was not used to this type of physical labor, and working alone for that long was very boring. With the summer heat and rain season about to begin, I decided to take a break here. My original goal was to have this completed within three months. That leaves me with 18 calendar days to complete the project, or if I only count actual work days, then I could have another 38 days to finish. I'll return to the property after the summer to see if the building got through the summer without any damage. That will give me time to reassess everything and decide where to go from here. And I guess that will be the content of the follow-up video. Thanks for watching, and thanks for the helpful comments left on the previous video.